before I get going, just want to take you know, 10 seconds to uh, recognize our teams. So Open Fog and IEEE for, uh, for all the hard work in getting this event off the ground and doing such a magnificent job. Um, so Lynn and everybody else, thank you very much. So um, where do we go from here? <laughs> Um, obviously, it's, it's, it's all about standards for fog computing and networking, and that's what we'd like to talk a little bit about. And of course, Rob is standards god. <laughs> um, he, will, uh, he will elaborate further on this, so perhaps I'll just get started here with uh, sort of a recapturing of some of the things we discussed yesterday, uh, which is fog comes of age. Um, and fog is coming of age, uh, quite frankly, because there was a need for a distributed architecture, for an architecture that in essence provides you resources from the very cloud to very thin continuum. Um, can't do it all in the cloud, can't do it all in the edge, too costly, so a distributed approach is definitely the way to go. And this actually validates the reason why a lot of companies have spent uh, a lot of money over the past few years in software virtualization, right? There was a reason for it. Um, digital transformation is here and now, and you guys probably saw this slide yesterday. A lot of new technologies that are changing the face of business, 5G, IoT, AI, and a lot more. And it's clear, it's, it's more than obvious, uh, and I think Dr. Tao Zhang yesterday very uh, clearly articulated the reason why you can't do this uh, alone from the cloud. Um, so you need an architecture that would, in essence, distribute this computing from cloud to things continuum. Um, and that's the reason why, um, as Hilton mentioned yesterday, over a few beers in Princeton, myself, Tao, and Professor Meng Cheng started brainstorming about, you know, so, so why is it with all the hype about IoT and everything you hear about it, um, things just don't seem to be taking off? And it was evident uh, that there's, there's no comprehensive horizontal approach towards stitching all of this together. Um, lots of fantastic organizations out there, many of whom we collaborate with as a consortium, um, but very siloed, very focused in specific areas, right? There are cloud organizations, mobile edge, focused on the edge piece, but truly no one really stitching all of this architecturally across the board. And that's sort of the idea behind Open Fog. You know, why, why don't we build a consortium where we can pull everybody together um, and by the way, leverage the fantastic work that's already been done by some of these groups. Um, no point in reinventing the wheel. And, uh, and, and provide the industry with the cohesive movement in the right direction to ensure that at the end of the day, these things all interoperate. So, this is truly the latest wave of fundamental change, and again, some of you may be familiar with the slide, but this is actually a good way to drive this point forward as to why we need standards, right? You know, uh, again, Dr. Zhang yesterday mentioned, you know, various TCP implementations that no one even knows about anymore. Um, but the fact is they did exist. They don't exist today, right? Because there's one standard that works across uh, all technologies. Um, actually, this is something Rob, that perhaps you could elaborate on, uh, you know, it's IEEE. <laughs> so actually, the next example is uh, our IEEE 802.11 set of standards, which um, go back uh, quite a long time now, um, but have managed to uh, stay upwardly compatible through multiple generations of physical layers, but a Mac layer stayed exactly the same. And today, we can still use with your ancient laptops or your brand new, uh, brand new cell phone, same 802.11. And of course, there's been a collaboration in, in this sense between IEEE doing the technical standards and the organizations that actually build the equipment um, and who you know, organize and publicize a name that's actually even more familiar than 802.11, which lacks something in uh, something in commercial appeal, and we call it Wi-Fi. And so uh, Wi-Fi is, is known throughout the world, and uh, it's based on a set of standards that uh, have progressed over, over the last couple of decades. So, um, yeah. So, so how about 
separate fog-like systems for uh, five, six wire telecom enterprises, smart city manufacturing? I mean, the answer is clearly no, right? Based on what Rob just uh, explained about Wi-Fi uh, and what we know to be true about uh, TCP IP, it's clearly um, that you can't have a variety of flavors of these technologies. And so the best way to enable all of this is standards, right? And this is sort of the goal of this consortium is to provide a horizontal framework for distributing computing functions and using, managing, and securing distributed resources and services throughout that cloud to very edge continuum. And the way we're going to achieve this is through standards. Now, having said that, it's important for me to highlight the fact that when we decided to launch this con uh, consortium, we did not want to be an SDO. So it obviously made sense that we would partner uh, with, the, with one of the best SDOs in the business. And that's the reason why, by design, IEEE has been there with us side by side since day one. So a little bit of nomenclature there, right? SDO means Standard Developing Organization. Thank you. <laughs> For those of you who aren't in the business. Um, so as we look forward and we look at the promise that this technology brings to the table, uh, the potential, and, and when I look at that, I'm always looking at it the from the business potential, obviously, but also the benefits to society, right? I mean, we're not connecting things for the sake of connecting things. There are reasons behind it. These use cases, a lot of them have safety and security in mind, efficiency of operations, all of, all of the above, which at the end we can easily transform into examples of how it benefits society. Um, so we have truly a tremendous power to, to sort of uh, you know, create the next revolution but to do it right, you absolutely have to have standards. And, and this is, again, the reason why we're here with IEEE working together side by side, um, you know, more than just a partnership. And, and Rob, I yeah. certainly would like to hear your thoughts on how it's been so far from day one. So I think one of the great things about the collaboration between uh, IEEE and OpenPog is that we got together from the beginning with the intention of doing a standard that crosses companies and industries. You know, often, you know, people have a great idea and they say, okay, uh, how do I get a piece of intellectual property and then uh, I'll, get a piece, I'll get a patent and then I'll go raise some money and I'll start a company and I'll become a trillionaire. But uh, the last part doesn't often happen. And the reason is that uh, somebody else had a different idea. And when everybody has different ideas, what happens is that the industry starts fighting with each other, um, if I may use that kind of strong term. And uh, we wind up not accelerating, but de-accelerating the, the progress of, of technology. So IEEE um, is a, how many members, uh, how many people here have heard of IEEE? Let's start at that one. Okay, how many people here are members? Oh, great, that's super. Uh, please renew this year. <laughs> um, so IEEE, uh, as most of you know, is a volunteer organization, a nonprofit, charitable, scientific, and educational, 501c3, chartered in the United States. Just uh, want to give that little background there. Um, and IEEE is great as a platform for standardization because it has no skin in the game. IEEE has no intellectual property. IEEE has no particular direction it wants things to go, but what it does provide is a platform for, for innovation. And it brings together um, academics who uh, create the very first ideas in, in, in uh, any kind of technical innovation, and it brings together uh, industry people and startups and entrepreneurs. And so the whole cycle of innovation can be contained uh, within the platform that IEEE offers. And so I'm um, a bit of an enthusiast for it, but if we look today in, at the landscape, there really aren't a lot of or other organizations that can provide that broad platform all the way from ideation to uh, productization. So IEEE decided that uh, we would invest something uh, with uh, OpenFog and uh, go along with uh, attempting to build this new area, principally for um, the reasons that uh, uh, Helder already said, which is that technically there was a tremendous opportunity here to create an architecture that really would uh, go all the way from the device to the cloud 
without being focused on either one, but making the sensible technical decisions at each part of the network about where computation was going to happen and where the networking was going to happen. So I triple joined uh, OpenFOG's uh, board of directors, and I think I saw some of the board of director members here. Um, and we've gotten off to a good start. So uh, we actually formed a working group on uh, fog computing and networking architecture. And John Zhao, who's right over there, is the chair of that group. Uh, we're just getting started. And by next year, I think we'll, uh, we'll have a standard, uh, the first standard, the first of many standards, I think. Uh, but uh, uh, that, that's where we're going. No, and I can't. Uh emphasize how important it was to actually get this group off the ground. We actually signed the contract last week um, and we're just ecstatic about it because it's, it's sort of the, uh, you know, the, the icing on the cake for a lot of work that's already underway. Um, and of course, we're expecting a lot of great things from you, John, and, and your committee. Uh, because this, this is an important step forward in terms of taking the reference architecture that OpenFog published last uh, February, I believe, and making that the de facto standard FOG computing architecture. And of course, subsequent uh, to that, there was a lot of uh, working in progress between the two teams. And what we expect uh, is after these initial standards are out, um, you know, lots of uh, subsequent releases of, of, of additional uh, architectures. So if we go to the next slide. Yep. So, um, you know, uh, may, maybe, how many of you have ever participated in the standards process at IEEE or any place else? Yeah, so there's a lot of variety out there in the kind of uh, ways that organizations do standardization. So I just thought I'd spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, one of the things that we're trying to do uh, within IEEE, uh, working with OpenFOG. So first of all, we've created what we call a rapid standardization process. And uh, this is done within the Communication Society, and in fact, John's group is a sponsor under the IEEE Communication Society. So we're trying to meet the uh, pull from industry to get this stuff done in a, in a timely fashion, and uh, we've created a process around that. The second item is that uh, it's an open process. So whether you're a member of OpenFOG now, or you want to be in the future, or uh, you never want to be, I don't know why, but anyway, uh, you're welcome to participate. So uh, your company can, can uh, enter into the, uh, into the standardization process and make contributions and expect a fair and open process in which people listen to what you have to contribute. And that's not always the case, but uh, in all standards environments, but we promise that that will be the case in IEEE. And I think finally, I think a point that we would like to emphasize is that we're open to global participation. This isn't a US-based standard or a European one or an Asian one or, you know, it's global. IEEE is a global organization. We have 450,000 members scattered in 161 countries and they're all invited to, to participate. And so this is a very important thing for us to not only get the standardization process started, but to get it accepted widely globally. So if there's global participation, there's at least a chance of global acceptance. And I think that's really important. No, and that's a fantastic point. And just for the record, OpenFog's also global, not quite the size of IEEE yet. Uh, but certainly with the launching of our Greater China and Japan regions, we're now working on Europe. We have the Americas uh, up and running. Um, so absolutely opportunity for everybody to contribute. So where are we today? Um, IEEE, uh, through its uh, Standards Association, has adopted the uh, document that constitutes the Open Fog Reference Architecture, and now there's an agreement to proceed through the standardization process. So uh, uh, we're really very close to getting that one, that in, in particular, out the door. And then uh, going next, there, we hope that through OpenFOG and the members in OpenFOG, as well as other participants in the process, people will start making contributions for um, the particular core technologies that might uh, play a part in OpenFOG, in an OpenFOG uh, technology uh, platform. And so uh, we want to offer our, uh, another piece of jargon here. Remember I said we were gonna do something rapid. 
So RRSA, going through IEEE or COMSOC RRSA stands for Rapid Reaction Standardization <laughs> Activity. So we have a way to go from a, an idea, you know, just a basic idea into the standardization process really quickly. And then uh, further down the line, uh, we expect to be able to offer uh, through Open Fog and through other elements uh, within the industry, compatibility, conformance testing, licensing, and promotion. I, I think probably IEEE will be less involved in the promotion aspect, but, um, um, but it, certainly with the partnership with Open Fog, I think that, that will be taken care of as well. So this shows you uh, sort of what the roadmap is for getting this work done over the next year or so. So, uh, uh, and I think, finally, um, we are, like to invite everyone to get involved. Absolutely. So uh, tomorrow afternoon at 2.35, we'll have a panel uh, which will go into IEEE and COMSOC and OpenFOG standardization in much more detail. Um, and uh, you'll get to hear me say some of the same things again, but you'll also get to hear John and, and uh, the head of the COMSOC uh, standardization, one of the COMSOC standardization bo boards. And uh, here's the website that uh, for the very first uh, architecture uh, group. Uh, again, IEEE is not great at naming things. We name things with numbers because uh, engineers think that way. So they actually the project is called P1934. Um, rings a bell, right? No. <laughs> Uh, but we'll come up with another name, I think, at, at some point when the promotional work gets done. But technically, it's known as 1934. So come to the session tomorrow afternoon and uh, uh, take a look at the website. And uh, uh, I'm sure that we're open to lots of participation. Fantastic. So I think we have a, a couple of minutes. And I think uh, it would be fantastic to maybe field a couple of questions, yeah? Hi, Mike Krill with uh, James Bremen Associates. So I've worked with both alliances and the IEEE before. So once you hand the spec over to the IEEE, what is to prevent the two standards from diverging in the future since the IEEE will now have a specification that they can modify according to their laws, rules, et cetera, and open fog still is in existence? I'm not sure quite what the question is. The, the well, is the, the question is, once it goes into IEEE, it becomes an IEEE spec, which means IEEE can change it as they will by IEEE specifications, open fog will continue doing other work moving forward. How do you prevent those two from diverging in the future? Well, of course, um, so first of all, the actual adoption of the architecture is an adoption. IEEE will add front matter and back matter, but it will not change the actual text of the, of the, uh, of the specification that's given to us. So that's number one. Number two, uh, standards do evolve, right? So if open fog goes to a version two, then uh, we would expect uh, IEEE to follow along with a similar adoption process. And so I, I think uh, uh, to the degree that Open Fog doesn't want the uh, specification to diverge, then it won't. If it does, then it will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just to add to that, you know, we've, we've actually had discussions along these lines. Uh, it's, it's probably a given that as things evolve, there will be iterations. Of, of some of these specifications. And so we will follow the same process, which is if that iteration happens pre-IEEE, they will adopt it as we hand it off. If it happens post-IEEE, which is, I think, your, your point, um, you know, most of the same people working on this are in Open Fog and IEEE. So my expectation would be that this will be a natural evolution with synergetic thoughts as to where we take the uh, the technologies. Um, I, I think. Are the two groups, sorry. Sorry. Have the two groups identified the core technologies for FOG and how many standards might be expected from that effort? Yeah, great, great question. Um, so the person you're sitting next to has worked on that issue. Uh, come tomorrow, we'll have some uh, discussion of what are the specific. <laughs> Dr. Gelman there. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have some discussion of what the proposals that have come to IEEE through the rapid reaction standardization activity are, and we'll talk about how the, the working groups are getting formed. By the way, it's just really fantastic to see the IEEE entourage here. It just goes to, to show the, the strong partnership between Open Fog and IEEE. Please. Uh, thank you. First of all, congratulations. This is really great news. I think bringing the weight of IEEE in order to move the reference architecture onto a much more strict standard is great news. 
Can you comment on the MOU that you signed with HCMEC and any type of correlative work that you would be doing between IEEE and HC to make sure that these type of fog and edge standards that are emerging would stay unified and so for vendors, you know, ease of implementation and lack of confusion. Are there any discussions going on? Can you comment on that at this point or is it too early? Sure. So one of the approaches that the founders and subsequently the members of OpenFog always had in mind was to, to really have a very open and collaborative approach with existing organizations. So the MOU uh, with MEC is just an extension of that. We have several liaison agreements with other organizations with the very goal in mind to, to try to achieve exactly that, which is leverage some of the fantastic work that has been done uh, by other organizations and where it makes sense adopt it, incorporate it into our work and vice versa. Um, so the MOU has been signed. We're looking forward. Uh, I think we have some members on the team that are going to be exploring what those areas of possible collaboration are. And we look forward to a very fruitful uh, engagement with MEC. So would we expect the IEEE work to align with Etsy? So if the output of this work is standards-based, I would expect it to roll into IEEE at some point in time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Lynn, one more question. Fantastic. Hi. Um, I was wondering, is there any active alignment between this and OPATH, the uh, Process Automation Foundation? Uh, not that I'm aware of it, not yet. Uh, we have actually quite a queue of requests and engagements that are ongoing. Um, if you visit our website, I think we have already have five or six liaison agreements already done, more to come. Um, again, the approach is exactly as I mentioned, very open, very collaborative. There's no point in reinventing the wheel. Uh, and, and, and together, I think we can get uh, there as an industry, even if it's through different paths, different organizations, but collaborating in the spirit of... Uh, of moving the technology along. Um, so to that extent, uh, it's one of the organizations that clearly is on our radar. All right, I think, uh, okay, one more question, John. Uh, it's not a question. Oh, uh, okay. The first two, like, I think, uh, would you allow me to introduce my colleagues and mentors? Sure, sure, okay. Hello, yes. Um, I think you, you believe that I'm not doing it alone. There's, this is really a team effort. And I'm actually more a junior people are learning from a lot of seniors. Uh, I have two uh, vice chairmen that are working with me. First of all is Dr. John uh, Tauzan uh, from Cisco. Uh, he is the vice chairman. The other one is uh, Dr. Jingyi uh, uh, Zhao from ZTE China. So you can already see that this is a, indeed a global effort. You know, I myself is from academia and they're from people from Cisco, and there are people from China, from ZTE, working with us. On the other hand, of course, you know, I get a lot of help from my mentors and IEEE. First of all, I have to thank uh, Mehmet uh, Alima. He's really my mentor, you know, the, the one that guide me through how to set up the, the, uh, the working group, and uh, will continue to help me. Thank you. And then, of course, uh, Alex Gelman. He is the one that will talk to us about how to do the RRSA to roll out more standards. And I think that would definitely be a very important step. So last but not the least, Dr. Yeah. Russell Singh, yeah. he is also the uh, another uh, uh, board member of, from IEEE in OpenFog. Thank you all. Thank you, John.